The use of complementary health approaches is quite common. For example, in the United States, roughly 38% of adults and 12% of children reportedly use them. And annual expenditures in 2012 amounted to $30.2 billion in out-of-pocket expenses not covered by health insurance. This includes $1.9 billion spent on children aged 4 to 17 years old. Despite the heavy use of complementary health practices and the large market for such products, the scientific understanding of the efficacy, mechanism of action, and safety of their use is still in the early stages of development. There are a number of terms used to describe the use of non-mainstream or non-allopathic forms of medicine. Perhaps you've heard of terms like complementary medicine, alternative medicine, integrative medicine, and so on. And you may be confused regarding their current use and meaning. So let's talk about that terminology. Allopathic medicine refers to the science-based modern medicine, such as the use of medications or surgery to treat or suppress disease. On the other hand, traditional medicine refers to systems based on traditional cultural practices of a people. There are also a number of terms used to describe the use of non-mainstream or non-allopathic forms of medicine. The National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, which is an institute of the National Institutes of Health in the United States, provides a simple explanation for these terms. Complementary medicine refers to the use of a non-mainstream practice together with a conventional or allopathic form of medicine. Alternative medicine refers to the use of a non-mainstream practice in place of conventional or allopathic medicine. Integrative medicine is similar to complementary medicine with the distinction that it refers to bringing both conventional and complementary practices together in a coordinated and intentional way. Regardless of the term used, whether it's complementary, alternative, or integrative, all of these refer to non-conventional or non-mainstream practices in their definition. But what's included in the list of non-mainstream practices? Many things. For example, an analysis of the 2012 National Health Interview Survey in the United States revealed that the 10 most common complementary health approaches used by adults were natural products, including dietary supplements other than vitamins and minerals, followed by deep breathing, yoga, tai chi or qigong, chiropractic or osteopathic manipulation, meditation, massage, special diets, homeopathy, progressive relaxation, and guided imagery. There are three broad categories of non-mainstream medical practices that fall within the definitions of complementary, alternative, and integrative medicine. And those are natural products, mind and body practices, and other practices, which incorporate aspects of both natural products and mind-body practices. Examples of medical practices from each category are listed here. Note that this is not a comprehensive list, and there are many other systems of medicine, such as Kampo, Jammu, Yunani, Tibetan traditional medicine, and so on, that are practiced across the world. In addition to the economic studies on complementary health markets, epidemiological studies on health practices across the segments of the population have yielded some inciting insights into these use trends. So let's break down those three main categories, starting with natural products. These come in many different forms, and their regulation also differs based on the type of product and their respective claims. We'll review the regulatory framework for these in a separate lesson. For now, though, you should note that this is a group that includes everything from herbs used as pharmaceutical drugs, teas, and dietary supplements, as well as probiotic microbes, minerals, and vitamins. In the second group, we have mind-body medicine, and this focuses on interactions among the brain, mind, body, and behavior with the intent of improving health. Some examples include meditation, yoga, acupuncture, deep breathing exercises, tai chi, and more. 
Manipulative and body-based practices also belong to this category, and these focus on the structures and systems of the body, including the bones, joints, soft tissues, circulatory, and lymphatic systems. This can also include spinal manipulation by a chiropractic practitioner or massage therapy. Movement therapies, which are movement-based approaches used to promote physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being, also belong here. One movement therapy you may be familiar with is Pilates. Energy field therapies can refer to healing techniques involving electromagnetic fields, such as magnetic and light therapy, and biofields, such as those used in Qigong, Reiki, and healing touch therapies. The third category refers to a other whole systems of medicine, which represent complete systems of medical theory and practice that have evolved over time in different cultures and apart from conventional medicine. Many of the elements of the first two categories that we just discussed are actually integrated into these systems, whether they involve natural products or mind-body practices, or in many cases, a combination of both. Each of these systems, like traditional healing, Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, homeopathy, and naturopathy, require substantial explanation and will be covered individually in other lessons. It's important to note that despite their popularity, though, across the globe, many of the traditional complementary and alternative medical practices have not yet been thoroughly explored or verified through the lens of Western medicine. While some studies have shown very promising results, others have yielded conflicting findings. What is clear, though, is that complementary, alternative, and integrative health approaches are heavily used and merit further investigation. Perhaps you yourself have used one or more of these healing strategies for your own health already. Perhaps you use supplements to boost your health or yoga and meditation to manage stress. No matter which technique you've tried, this is a great place to start to learn more. Your challenge for this lesson is to take a deeper look at one of the non-allopathic health strategies discussed in this lesson. What sorts of studies have been undertaken on it? Laboratory, animal, or human studies? Where is this practice most heavily used in the world? Does it make up a part of a larger medical system of traditional medicine? In addition to the resources available through the National Library of Medicine at pubmed.gov, I also encourage you to visit the website of the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health to access the latest information on research in this field.